Let's stand together. The song is called Joy to the World. We have a special service for you all this morning. You're welcome to sing along, clap your hands. You can move your hips a little bit, your shoulders. Feel the joy of the Lord this morning. It goes like this. Joy to the world. Church, you may be seated. I'd like to invite our associate pastor, Brother Stedman. Well, good morning. Good morning. So glad all of you have joined us for our Christmas worship here at Shoal Creek. Uh, if this is your first time worshiping with us, we say a special welcome to you and to your family. We have been praying for this special day for several weeks. We have been preparing for this day for several weeks, and we're thankful that it's finally here. May God bless you. <laughs> Take two steps back. There you go. Right there. Right there. You don't have to leave. May God bless you. <laughs> but seriously, we have been praying for this week, preparing for it. We're thankful that you're here. And uh, we have a connect card for you. This is for all of our first time guests. It's located in the pew in front of you. Uh, if you don't mind, just take one of those Connect cards out, fill it out, 
And there'll be three offering boxes in the back of the sanctuary. You can drop that Connect card in. And also after the service, uh, our senior pastor will be up the stairs in our library. He'd love to meet you and your, to your family to see if there's anything we can do for you and your family and if you got any questions about our church. Uh, real quick, uh, it's talk, talking about Christmas, Christmas Eve, and we'll have a Christmas Eve service here in the sanctuary, sanctuary at 5 o'clock. 5 to 5.30. We'll keep it at 30 minutes because I know a lot of people have family get-togethers and stuff. But we also want to take the time to have a special service on Christmas Eve. So that's a candlelight Christmas Eve service. Everyone's invited, invited to that. And then Christmas morning, we will meet right here at 10 a.m. And no Sunday school, but you and your family are invited to worship with us on Christmas morning at 10 o'clock. It'll be a wonderful time. Also today... We will have our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We do this each year. All the proceeds from this benefit international missions. So if you are visiting with us, you're not required to give to this, but you have an opportunity to give. But as membership here at Show Creek, we are honored to be able to give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And you'll know about that here in just a little bit. We'll have a mission march here. You'll have an opportunity to come to the stage and give your offering this morning. Let me make sure that's everything I was supposed to do here. Yeah, number one thing, you've been prayed over. And I don't take that lightly or say that lightly. Each and every one of you have been prayed over. The Holy Spirit knew that you would be here today. We hope this is a spiritual renewal for you, an encouragement for you this time of the year. A lot of sickness going around. A lot of people have lost loved ones. A lot of discouragement. But in this place, we can come and we can worship the true king as he is the reason for this season. And we hope this is a wonderful time for you and your family as we worship this morning. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for those that have put countless hours into preparing for this service. Most importantly, Father, we pray for each person that's in this room. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fall upon this place. May your name be glorified in a wonderful and a special way. Lord, we pray for the enemy, that he will not be a distraction this evening, this morning, Father. Lord, with the sound equipment and all the audio-visual equipment, it's so easy to have technical problems. And Lord, it can be a distraction. But Father, we pray that your spirit will remove those distractions, that your name will be glorified, the message will be boldly proclaimed this morning, and Father, we pray for people to come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Move in a very special way, Father, as only you can, and we'll give you the glory for all that you will do. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to go ahead and invite our preschoolers up this morning. Woo! Give them a nice round of applause, church.
Luke 2, 8 through 14. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you gr good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Yeah. 
the search engine, and I can help you find anything related to DIY Christmas decorations. Oh, okay. Uh, let's jump right in. Here we go. What date Christmas this year? Uh, December 25th. What date Christmas next year? December 25th? So it goes. Cook ham fast. Uh. Oh, ham flamethrower recipe. Wait, what? Christmas present, mom. Nice. Cheap. Nice. What day Christmas 2035? Are you serious? Is Santa Claus real? Uh, you should maybe ask your parents about that. Gift wrap bowling ball. Please be careful. Custom dog Christmas. Sorry, what? Christmas dog custom cute. Oh, you mean costume? Christmas dog costume cute! Gift wrap accordion. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. Can I drink expired eggnog? No. What happens if drink expired eggnog? Why'd you even ask me in the first place? Dealing with relatives. Okay. Dealing with nosy relatives. Oh, uh, well... Dealing with my nosy, overbearing relatives who won't stay out of my business. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> Gift wrap a saddle. Who are you buying this stuff for? Santa Claus riding a unicorn. Santa Claus riding a unicorn socks. Is that a thing? Search it up. Oh, wow. Here they are. Take my money. Norwegian tree skirts. How many lights, one outlet? Elf pajamas. Dog singing Christmas carols. <sighs> Hello. What is Christmas really about? <laughs> I've got just the thing. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So, Jesus? Jesus. May I? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Fixed burnt ham. Uh, okay. Uh, you know what? Forget it. Pizza delivery Christmas Eve. <laughs> no problem. This next song is called Amen. This next song is called uh, Green Sleeves, also known as What Child Is This? It's going to feature our special ministry. You're welcome to sing along with the oohs, the ahs, and the words when they come. It goes like this.
We don't know who Billy Ray Joe is, but that's what they call themselves, the 67 Shepherds. You have something to say? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, I'm without, nervous enough to stand up here. <laughs> but uh, for, no further ado, this song is called Christmas Carol of Love. What note was that? What note was that? Wow. Mm. Well, we put you guys in a really good mood so y'all would give more money. <laughs> but seriously, though, this is a serious moment now. We're switching gears. Did y'all enjoy that? Amen. We're going to pray over our morning's offering, and this is again going to international missions. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity we've had this morning to celebrate 
your truth, your goodness, Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, through serious moments, through cute moments, Lord, through funny, silly moments, Lord God, we, we recognize the meaning of the season this morning. And so, Lord, now we ask you to bless this offering. We ask you to bless the giver. And, Lord, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, when we start the song, we're going to have a missions march. And you feel, uh, however you feel led to give, you're welcome to come when we start. The song is called, I Still Believe in Christmas.
I can play. <clears throat> I know it. I know it. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming and being part of the services this morning. I'm going to do it a little bit different this morning. Normally what we do is we go in through the book of Acts on a Sunday morning. We start in the beginning of a book and we work our way through it. We don't skip subjects, topics, any of that stuff. But as you have probably noticed this morning, this morning is not a normal Sunday morning. We, we've tried to incorporate every branch of ministry that this church has. And, you know, as I was telling my parents and people around here, these Sunday mornings make me nervous. It's a lot of moving parts. Uh, and so it keeps me anxious. What also makes me anxious is that we're going to do it a little bit different. And I'm, I'm sort of a creature of habit. And so we're going to go just slightly different, a little bit different. And what I'm going to do this morning is just simply tell you about my favorite Christmas carol. Everybody has favorite ones. For the longest time, my favorite Christmas carol was Oh Holy Night, which is what a lot of people will say that is their favorite one, and it truly is a wonderful one. There's other ones that love uh, Joy to the World. There, there's multiple good Christmas songs. Some of the ones that people love the most are secular songs, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or the 12 Redneck Days of Christmas, <laughs> or one of my personal favorite, Grandma Got Ran Over by That Reindeer. <laughs> but a song that has become close and dear to my heart is the little drummer boy. And there's a reason for it. You know, when it comes to the little drummer boy, it's a song that a lot of people simply don't understand. It can be really confusing, and the reason why is because it is just filled with parappa pom poms. That's almost what it's all about, is the parappa pom pom. But you miss the meaning behind it, and it's such a glorious story. And so what I want to do this morning is explain to you why I love this song. And, I, and my hope is that not only does it point you to Christ, but you will never hear this song the same way again. The song starts off simple. It's just a boy. And the boy is sitting there, and along comes the Magi. They don't call them the Magi. You just have to know the Christmas story. It says that we, we are wanting to invite you to come see this new king, and we're bringing gifts. Well, who in the Christmas story brought gifts? The Magi. And so the Magi are bringing gifts, and it's the finest gifts they can bring. And they invite this drummer boy to come along, to come see this newborn king. And again, it's filled with parumpa bum bum. See, at this point, we don't know he's a drummer boy. They, they go and they find the boy. They find Christ as he is being born there in the manger. And when he finds him, the boy is shocked. He's shocked to realize that he's a poor boy too, just like he is. And while everybody's offering their finest gifts, frankincense, gold, and myrrh, the boy doesn't have anything to give. And it's filled with the rumpa bum bums. And in between all of that, finally he looks and he says, You know what I do have? I've got a drum. And so this morning I, I borrowed one of my one of my dear friends drum. And I'm gonna mess this up. Y'all ready? I have to say it when I do it. If not, I can't do it. <laughs> ba rum pa bum bum <laughs> What's that called? A peri-diddle. I don't even know what that is. It's what Chris said it was, though. And he's the music man, and I trust what he says. So the boy looks at Mary... And he says, you know what I do have is a drum. Do you mind if I play? And you have to sort of think for a second. What 
mother who just gave birth to a newborn child that's sleeping says, yeah, by all means, play a drum. <laughs> so, really? But the boy plays. He does. Just plays. And there he plays, and after he is done playing, and what a simple thing. Y'all realize, I've, I, I know this is going to shock you, I've never taken drumming lessons in my life. <laughs> and I've done it. I can play it. What a simple tune. Well, I say I messed it up. <laughs> Just quit, Malin. God. But what a simple little tune the boy plays. And the, the, the song ends with Jesus doing what? Smiles. He enjoyed it. The newborn babe enjoyed what it is. And y'all, the, the song is awesome because it, it's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to invite people to come see Christ. We're supposed to bring our gifts to Christ. And what we realize when we find Christ is that he's just like us. Just like us. You realize that he gave up the heavens and the earth to come and to be born just like us. And that little poor boy that didn't have nothing realizes that the king of eternity is just like him. The Emmanuel, God with us. And he, he learns this glorious truth and he plays. He plays the most simplistic song that's ever been played. Just as we sit here and we watch our children, what do we do? Do we care that they're fumbling around? Do we care that they're, they're falling or they're not doing it perfectly? No, we are grinning from ear to ear, ecstatic. And my heavenly Father is ecstatic regardless of the rump of pom poms regardless of how you mess it up. Y'all do realize that this song, it's us. It's the glorious gospel. It just gets messed up with all the rump of pom poms in between, and you end up missing the point. You need to understand that it's all about what Christ has done for us. My life was worthless, absolutely worthless. I was a raging alcoholic for the majority of my life. I lost everything. I lost my homes, I lost jobs. Many family members couldn't trust me to even be at their house. Some of you've got family members like that. And God came into my life and changed everything. And I'll, I'll never forget that when I'm sitting there and when I finally started coming to my senses, you know, that's one of the best verses in all the Bible is right there when the prodigal child is sitting there in the pig pen and it says that he came to his senses. What a glorious moment in the life of a believer when they finally come to their senses. And I came to my senses, and what I realized is that my life was worthless. I had wasted it. He had given me this glorious thing, and I have utterly wasted my life. And I, and I remember being raised up in church, just like some of these little ones have been raised up in church. And later on in my life, at 27, I finally just looked at God and said, God, I, all I've got is my life. And I don't want it no more. You can have it. I remember being told as a little babe in church, don't ever think that bringing your kids to church is pointless. They're taking in so much. And I remember sitting there hearing the fact that he would want my life. Well, God, I don't want my life. You can have it. And so I gave him my life. You know what I gave him? My parampa bum bum. That's all I gave him. It was useless. It, was, it wasn't that complicated. And do you know what he did? He took it. And he says, I can make something of this. Because you finally humbled yourself. You've, you've repented and you've come to me. That's all he ever wanted me to do in the first place. Do you realize that that's the gospel? According to 1 Corinthians, the apostle Paul said in chapter 1, verse 26 through 29, for consider your calling, brothers and sisters, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, 
But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to shame the things that are strong. And the insignificant things of this world and despise God has chosen. The things that aren't, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no human may boast before God. Our Savior loved us so much that he left everything to come and to be born just like us. To save the poor boy that has nothing. To save us who had nothing. And the thing is, he knows who we are. It's not like he, he doesn't know the truth. Psalms 103, 13 and 14 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He is mindful that, or he is mindful that we are what? Dust. He knows how you were made. He knows the gifts that you have. And what you need to realize is this glorious, precious truth. He just asks you to use them. To bring your drums to him. Bring your parampa bum pom Y'all, that's what the gospel's always been about. We've already gone through the gospel of Mark here on Sunday mornings. And remember that there was two major feedings. The feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. In both of those instances, Jesus Christ had to teach the disciples the same lesson because those disciples are just like us, so short-minded, missing the point most of the time. And what did the disciples do, or what did Christ ask them to do? He sat there and he would see the large crowd, and it says that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, had compassion upon them. And he looks to the disciples and he said, feed them. And what did the disciples do both times? Well, I, 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 we, I don't have the money. We, we can't do this. This is impossible. And what did Jesus say? Well, what do you have? If you'll just give it to me, I'll bless it and multiply it and make it a hundredfold. I can do so much with what little thing. And we all remember the story. He took a kid's Lunchable and blessed it. I say lunchable because five tortillas and two sardines doesn't sound as good. <laughs> but he takes it, and he blessed it, and he grew it, and he multiplied it. And the reality is that's exactly what he does for us. Every one of us has a talent. Every one of us has gifts. Some of you are literally rocket scientists. Y'all think, why do I get nervous when I stand up in the mornings? On Sunday mornings? Because I'm speaking to people that are far smarter than I am. Some of you are extremely talented when it comes to business. You can make money without even trying to make money. Some of you are gifted when it comes to athletics. Some of you can actually hit a home run in softball, and I still have yet to been able to do it, but it's coming. Amen, Rand, where you at? <laughs> Don't fire me on the team yet, brother. Everybody has gifts. Everybody has talents. Some of you can sing, and some of you know you can sing, and you ain't doing it. Some of you have the ability to teach, and you, you can teach, but you're not doing it. Some of you have the ability to encourage and to enrich those little lives that we just saw. One of the greatest ministries in this church is our special needs ministry. And we have wonderful, gifted, and talented people that, that minister to them. They point them to Christ, and they enrich my life every time I see them. I have people that have the amazing gift to cook. It's one of the reasons why I came to a Baptist church. And they cook meals constantly. I have people that have the ability to pour tea. Dennis, say hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody has gifts. Everybody has talents. Everybody has their <laughs> drums. Just play it. Play and watch your Savior smile. 
and say, man, if I, I can use this gift for his glory. Some of you have the ability to go and to coach little leagues, to, be, to spend your lives enriching younger lives, to point them to Christ. Everybody has these thousands of little gifts, little talents, and when you put all these little gifts, all these little talents together, that's the church. That's the church. But it doesn't happen unless somebody plays their drum. It doesn't happen unless you give to Christ what you have been given. Most of you know my favorite modern-day hero of the faith is D.L. Moody. The reason why I love D.L. Moody, he's one of the greatest evangelists in American history. He was overweight. Something else that a lot of people aren't aware is that he was born in the country and he had no education whatsoever. The boy could barely speak. Some of y'all have said that, man, I, 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 I don't think the Lord could use me. I'm not smart enough or I'm country or the way I speak. Garbage. Do you realize the thousands upon thousands of souls through a country boy named D.L. Moody? The man could speak. Do you realize that when he would go into universities and preach, that they would actually make fun of him because he couldn't even pronounce the names correctly? But God would save thousands upon thousands of people from him because he had a phrase in his life. It said that the world is yet to see what a man fully devoted unto him can do. And yet, by the grace of God, I am to be that man. And he gave everything he had to serve Christ. He played his drum. It wasn't a great drum. It wasn't even as good as this one. He had nothing. But he preached with everything he had. And he gave all his life to it. It started with Sunday school. Y'all, they wouldn't give him a Sunday school. He wasn't smart enough, so he just gathered the kids in the streets of Chicago and started teaching Sunday school. And it became a mega church known today as Moody. It's an institute now. All because of a country boy. The reason why I tell you about him is because one of my favorite stories that I remember so reading one of his biographies is he was preaching his heart out one day to thousands. And this is before microphones. He preached his heart out. And, and I don't know if you've been in church around or for a while, but if you have, then you're aware that sometimes the meanest people you'll ever find is in church. He preached his heart out, and he's heading out. And like a lot of people, I have no doubt, many of them came up to him and said, man, that was awesome. What a great message. But one woman came up to him, and she said to him, sir, the way that you butcher the king's English, you should never preach again. You ought to be ashamed. To not be able to speak as eloquently or to, sp to, to speak the way that you've spoken. You butchered it. Like I couldn't even understand you hardly. What amazes me about Moody is that he had a lot better heart than me. I'm not sure how I'd have responded at that. But this is how he responded. He said, ma'am, you're right. And I'm really trying to fix it. And he did. He started a university. He tried to learn. And he said, I, I'm, I'm giving all my God, I got to try to serve Christ. And I'm, I'm trying to learn better. Would you please pray with me that God will teach me how to be more eloquent in my speech. That I can reach more for him. But he didn't end that way. He looked at her at the last second and he said to her this. But ma'am, I'm giving everything I have for Christ. What are you doing with all that he's given you? Moody was nothing but a poor drummer boy that says, you know what? All I got's a drum. And I'm going to play it for you. And God changed the landscape of America through it. Most of you have got far greater education, far greater skills, far greater abilities, and yet you come up with every little rhyme and reason why you can't play your drum. 
You know what I just want to ask? Why don't you just play your drum and hear those wonderful words that Scripture records that says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a little things. I'm going to put you over much. That's the only words I ever wanted to see here. But you're going to have to play your drum. You're going to have to be willing to come up and do it. To give him all you got. And that's all I wanted to give you this morning. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come and to just be reminded of the glorious gospel truth that Jesus Christ came to be born just like us. And what a wonderful little song that we hear constantly. And in the midst of all the parampa pom poms we hear the glorious gospel that if we could just play our drums, Jesus will multiply it and grow it and allow us to truly be the light and the salt in this world that he's called us to be. Father, it's a simple truth. Please take this simple truth and pour it into the hearts of your people. Bring conviction upon them that they too will have the courage to stand before their king and realize that they too can play their drum. Amen. This is our time. Let's stand, church. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin. Praise. 
praise his holy name. Fall on your knees. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine. Sing it to Christ. Try singing this with us. It goes like this. Oh, now. 